What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back for the Tour de France week two with Uno X. Go back and watch the first week if you missed it because we are aiming for a podium position with Skelmosa. We've had some great performances in the mountains, some great race days with Skelmosa which does leave him just behind Thibaut Pino in fourth place in the GC. I think Tadej Pogaccia and Egan Bernal barring any instance are going to be unstoppable but that third step on the podium I want to try and make ours. Magnus Court is also aiming for green and potentially we could have Skelmosa going for polka dots if uh, the GC challenge falters. So we have a lot still to play for. Anyway, taking a look at the stages coming up today. First, we have a very intriguing one with a very steep finish uh, at Mont Saint Clair. Some crosswinds as well. Beforehand, stage 11. Oh my word, a massive ascent of Mont Agual. A massive climb, 230k as well is the stage in total. We have a sprint stage, a hilly one, which could be classed as a medium mountain stage, to be fair. Need to be careful there. Same goes for stage 14 into Ajaxio. And then another stage, I think, on the island of Corsica. A massive mountain stage to conclude the week. And so the first stage, we need to be careful in the crosswinds, but we could try and perhaps attack them and gain an overall advantage. Let's see. And so it's a minor breakaway up the road today. Omar Frele, Cyril Bartz and Pesa Vakoc. We are waiting for the crosswinds to attack. Before that though, we do have an intermediate sprint to account for. Scarset trying to put Magnus Court in a good position. We're going to have to go a little early, try and get the jump on some guys. And we seem to have done that pretty nicely, to be fair. Hopefully we can hold off Sam Bennett. He's pretty quick though. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we beat him in the end. We are staying right in touch though. And we are now in the crosswinds. This is where we need to be very careful. All our guys are to the front and I've even put Christoph Scarset and Magnus Court to the front to try and set a hard rhythm. And we are certainly managing to create some degree of carnage. I'm sure there's no uh, perennial GC contenders back here. Uh, I wish there were, but all the time we're seeing smaller groups drop off the back. And I mean, we didn't bring many great climbers to the race. We bought a lot of very strong flat riders, though. These are the type of stages we definitely need to capitalise on. So let's continue pressing on. And we now have some really quite substantial sections of win. We're down to under 80 riders at the front and more riders dropping all of the time. We can only hope some really noticeable riders are among them as we head to the coastline. And we're now seeing huge gusts of wind up to 40. So I have put in a little acceleration with Marcus Hulgaard. We've really run out of domestiques. Now Matthew van der Poel has been dropped as well. We're down to 57 riders at the front of the race. But to be honest, I think I'd quite like to go for the stage with Hulgaard. That's definitely not happening anymore if we carry on like this. So let's focus on Skelmosa. I think I may have thrown away a chance for Marcus Hulgaard to win a Tour de France stage here today. Uh, would have been difficult for him to win nonetheless. Skelmosa is feeling good and uh, that's the important thing overall. So entering the final two kilometers right now, an absolutely stunning setting and Hulagard up to 95 and Skelmosa is positioned absolutely perfectly by his teammate. He can sprint and Skelmosa just go for the line, my man. See where you can finish today. I doubt it's gonna be the win. Let's hope he gets close to it though as Wout van Aert is attacking for the line and it is going to be a strong finish today by Skelmosa. Wout van Aert trying to hold on. We'll try to move into his wheel. Here comes Pogaccia as well. Alaphilippe in a good position and it is going to be quite select here today, but Wout van Aert is going to win on Mont Saint Clair with Pagacha in a very strong second place. Skelmosa is right there though. And Thibaut Pino potentially struggling in those crosswinds is going to lose time and we are moving on to the podium today. Really strong stuff by Skelmosa today, finishing right at the front of the group and I do believe our efforts were worthwhile when you consider the results. Bernal losing 17 seconds to us and plenty more riders dropping time as well, including Thibaut Pino crucially, which does mean we now move on to the podium. And we certainly need to continue our good form on Mont Aguel. It's a massive climb to the line. Took place at the Tour de France fairly recently as well. And um, yeah, it's so, so tough. We need the good form. We've had a hectic start to today's stage. It's been crazy. Skelmosa is okay, but we've had a couple riders falling. 
We do have, though, two riders in today's breakaway, including Jonas Widerberg and a plus five day for Magnus Court. Yanni Moskon, Jorn Izagiri, some other riders in the group. Oh my word, if you think the end of this stage is difficult, the beginning isn't much easier, I tell you for sure. Bookman is behind, Emmerich Mass has just crashed as well, Movistar trying to help him out, MVDP is behind, but... All of our guys are just getting sapped with the constant up and down nature of the terrain at the moment. And I can see this section is super exposed to wind. You can see 8.6k exposed to the wind. We need to make a massive effort here to make sure we're staying to the front of the race. Look at the state of the Pelson and how many riders are going to struggle and we have a gap. So glancing up the road, Magnus Court can roll across the line and take some big points in the battle for the green jersey. We only have about seven riders left at the front in the breakaway, but we only only have 38 riders in the peloton and look at our guys energy we're cooked just trying to hold on here and among the riders drops are julian alaphilippe i wonder how many other gc contenders are behind rigo Aran also behind and the situation up the road has become even more dire as we have 31 riders left in the peloton guys what is going on i've brought back Jonas Widerberg, who was done from the breakaway but those two satellite riders Potentially, Widerberg and Magnus Court are going to be crucial for our chances today. And now, Wout van Aert has been put to the front to work for Jumbo Visma, I guess, for Vingegaard and Roglic. Perhaps because the likes of Alaphilippe is behind, Aran is behind, Paulus is behind. Those are three riders just there in the top ten. And straight away, we have more riders. Jasper Philipsen being dropped as well. Oh my word, Skelmos are just clinging onto the group. I mean, now Primoz Roglic is behind. What's he doing? How has he been dropped suddenly? This stage is crazy. So Jonas Widerberg falls behind alongside Nielsen Paulus, who has been unlucky today, but he also hasn't had the legs. Neither has Primoz Roglic for the entirety of the Tour de France. And 29 riders are going to enter the foot of Mont Aguel together in the peloton. Magnus Court still up the road ready to drop back and help us out. We have Bouchard, Izagiri and Moscon left in the breakaway. And straight away, I think we're going to see some riders really struggle on this terrain. Skelmosa though, looking very comfortable to start and Wout is still to the front as the breakaway have been swept up. What a long and gruelling climb this is, but the steeper percentages definitely come towards the top. So let's be a bit cautious to start. So we have 5k to go towards the top of this climb. We're completely trapped to the back of the group. I'd love to maybe attack, guys. Can you let me through? And so with 3k to go, let's try and capitalize on Magnus Court's great plus five day. He finally gets to the front of this group and let's see if we can shred things right here and perhaps even drop Poggy or Bernal, that would be the dream scenario. Oh, and look at this. Magnus Court has ridden off the front with Skelmosa on his wheel. Let's try and keep Magnus Court with us. I think he's strong enough. And Spiragli is the only rider to follow. And Poggy and Bernal decide not to follow us at this stage. We have 1.5k to go. Spiragli is gone. And could this now be a famous opportunity for Uno X 1 2 at the Tour de France? No one is reacting. This is crazy. So Magnus Court Nielsen crosses the climb first and Skelmosa in his wheel has two minutes to the yellow jersey group featuring 19 riders. I do not know how this has happened but it's definitely happening. Okay 7k to go. What a sight is Magnus Court and Skelmosa at the front of the race alone. I thought the Pelton had woken up and they have because Simon Yates is now making a move. Surely Pocky or Bernal are going to try and catch us. Surely they have the strength to do so as well but Magnus Court what a ride helping his leader today. And so Magnus Court is finally done. Skelmosa gives him a pat on the back as Damiano Caruso did to Peo Bilbao at the Giro d'Italia. And he goes in search of his Tour de France victory on Mont Aguel. It's a crazy stage today. And Matthias Skelmosa Jensen is going to make a big statement by winning the stage. We're not going into yellow just yet at least, but we can dream because Skelmos Jensen, that was a godly ride today and we deserve to sit up and celebrate that one atop the mountain. What a stage that was. Can Magnus Court hold on for second place? No, he cannot. That is actually going to go to Wout van Aert with Pogacar 
and Bernal just behind. That was absolutely epic. What a performance and Magnus Court was absolutely godly on that plus five. We get a stage win, Skelmoser gets a stage win and he also moves closer to within three minutes of the yellow jersey and guys, I tell you, I am dreaming right now of that yellow jersey. We are looking very good on the podium. In the other jerseys, Court is second in green and Skelmosa is fourth in the polka dots. But we're granted a bit of a break on stage 12. It's one for the sprinters. So more green jersey points up for grabs. We're going to try and go very early this time with Magnus Court Nielsen. I think a little too early, but we should get some decent points now of course we're second in the jersey and let's take a look where we are we are one point behind Pogaccio we got there eventually oh my Marcus Ullegaard has fallen but that's not all because Tade Pogaccio is behind of course his teammates are going to sit up and try and help him back in but we could see a lightning rhythm and you guys already know I have come to the front to try and maybe set a bit of a tempo like some other teams as well the yellow jersey is behind and we have had so many crashes at this race, it's absurd. Two crashes separate of one another right there, literally in the space of meters. But I'm sure, of course, UAE will get back in. And you know what? UAE have multiple riders still in this group. Conrad Almeida, Alvaro Hodge is here. And they are struggling to get Tade back in. And you know what? I think Tade is going to lose time today. This could be the day that Tade Pogaccia loses the yellow jersey. And we are certainly not the only team on the front tempoing right now. This is crazy. A race-defining moment for sure. Now Tade being forced to do some of the work himself as Hulagard sits on his wheel. But we only have 3k to go in the sprint. And where is Magnus in the green jersey? This is his chance to win the jersey. And he is absolutely nowhere to be seen right now. Um, and I certainly can't see us winning the stage this way. Because Alex Kristoff was meant to be leading him out. So a bit of karma for maybe uh, pacing with Tade behind. Who's going to go on and win the stage? It is Case Bowl, I think. Oh, he's just beaten by Caleb Ewan on the line. And let's see how much time Tade loses. This race isn't sure on surprises, is it? Tade Pogaccia loses 2 minutes and 42 seconds. I did not expect it to be that much. But I can't believe that UAE Team Emirates didn't give them more resources. Because they had Almeida, Hodge and Conrad all available to drop back. And they didn't to help Pogaccia. So... Tade has lost the yellow jersey and Egan Bernal inherits it again with Skelmos and now only a minute and a half down on the lead of the Tour de France. This is getting very, very tense, guys. Egan Bernal, Tade Pogaccia and perhaps Skelmosa going for yellow. I love to see it. Magnus Court did massively bottle that chance for green. Wout van Aert does inherit the green jersey. Anyway, no rest for the wicket because stage 13 features plenty more categorised climbs again uh, into Toulon. It's going to be super difficult. We need the good form to remain for the entire race if we want to stay anywhere near Poggy and Bernal. And in terms of the breakaway, I did want some representation today. So we do have alongside Julian Alaphilippe and Mari van Savenen for quick step view. Very strong breakaway with Geraint Thomas and Jakob Fulsang as well. I do have Anders Scarset up the road, hopefully just to be a satellite rider. But like seemingly every stage at this year's Tour de France, this one is not to be underestimated, that's for sure. Uh, it's been so tough. 100 riders are all that remain. Scarset already dropped from the breakaway. Magnus Court going for some green jersey points right here. And he is up to second. Okay, still trailing Wout van Aert though. So another fall for Primoz Roglic. He's behind again. It has been the race from hell for him. More riders, uh, noticeable riders have been dropped. I think Caleb Ewan has actually withdrawn from the race as well. Skelmosa is just about holding on to his position at the front of the race. Feeling pretty strong to be fair. Thibaut Pino has been dropped. I've just spotted him behind. He is not getting back in today. We have 22 riders guys at the front of the race before the final climb. But if Pino's dropped and Skelmoser still has this much energy left, he must be feeling in tip-top shape today. And by the way, it was a quick step masterclass. Julian Alaphilippe is going to go on and win today's stage by an absolute mile from the breakaway. But um, we expect a GC battle behind. The final climb isn't the most difficult of the day, 
but it certainly could be the one with the most attacks. And Madoas actually trying to work Thibaut Pino back into the group. He may get back in, but I hope we can instantly drop him again. Only 6k to go, and Marcus Hulagard starts to ramp things up on Fort Cordor. It's the final stage of the day. Let's pop those gels and Hulagard popping things straight up to 90. There goes Pino starting to struggle again. Anyway, we are now looking more to Egan Bernal and Tade Pogaccia, who look to be on fine form today. Only 3k to go in this stage as Jack Haig actually tries an attack. Let's maybe try and follow him with Skelmosa. In fact, you know what? Let's just try and sit on the wheel of Tade Pogaccia and Joao Almeida. I think Tade is going to sprint away from us at the end under the Flam Rouge. Maybe take some more time. So is Egan Bernal. Frustrating despite a plus for Zay. we're going to lose time to Tade Pogaccia here. Perhaps could have played it differently, but Tade wins more time back in the battle for yellow. We are finishing in very close proximity though. This Tour de France has everything. This race has just been crazy. And I think today we had a missed opportunity. Perhaps I should have attacked on the penultimate climb with Skelmosa. That would have been aggressive, but perhaps would have been the move. We stay third place and lose a little time to both Bernal and Pagaccia. Whereas the dream of yellow for Thibaut has died yet again, I'm afraid. We continue on then in Corsica, and I love these stages. So many hills throughout this one. Could be a little more difficult to attack and gain time on, but if we have the opportunity, we need to try and take it. So I'd really love to try and get some more satellite riders up the road today. It's the only way I really see that we could maybe make some GC gains. And for now, it looks like we're going to have three riders in the breakaway with Marcus Hulagard bridging to the front of the race. This is a great start. Oh, and we just had another crash in the Peloton. I thought it was a GC contender. I did check the uh, crash frequency. It is set to just times 1.0, so uh, I'm not sure why we've had so many crashes throughout this race so far. And oh my word, as I say that, can you believe it, Skelmosa crashes. He crashes again, not the first time it's happened this race, and it's not an ideal moment for us. And we're not getting back in too easily for the moment. We have two minutes to the peloton. But another crash, and Julian Alaphilippe will tag back on to this group. This is crazy. So still in the breakaway, we have three riders there out of seven. Miguel Angel Lopez, by the way, is also in this group as well as the channel legend Bruno Armorai. But four minutes back to the peloton, as I alluded to, and Skelmosa, he hasn't had an easy ride today. We had to chase on for a while. We had to move back up in the group, and I think we're definitely just playing it defensively today. So one advantage of being in the breakaway is you can see what's going on up the road, and I I could see that the road got very narrow here, which is why uh, Skelmosa, for once, is positioned quite well entering a climb. So there goes Train. Hulagard is left to fight, hopefully, for the stage in the group at the front of the race. He is on a great day, so I would hope he is able to do that if the Peloton don't catch him. Okay, but it looks like talk from me of this stage not being selective is going to be rubbish. We have 37 riders at the front of the race. Miguel Angel Lopez has been dropped up in the breakaway and only Hulagard and Parapentra just ahead of Armourai at the very front. But what a stage we've had already. It has been so fast. Okay, so 10 k to go on the final Big climb of the day, of course, before that final little hill to the line. And it's only 90 seconds for the breakaway. They will not be winning today's stage, which means we need to be all in for Skelmosa today. And so the power of the satellite riders coming into play because Train, who was up the road, he just goes out the back. But now we do have Marcus Hulagard available to protect Skelmosa. And you know what? Let's try and press on here. Only 28 riders here. Can we do some major damage before the top? So Hulagard with some big work, but no real GC protagonists are going to be dropped. We still have 23 riders in contention for the stage at the top of the climb. And now we have attacks and it's Julian Alaphilippe trying to escape for the stage victory. He's gone clear with Bruno Amarai who simply doesn't have the acceleration to follow Alaphilippe for now. Hulagard trying to control these attacks but no one helping him for the moment. And I think we can maybe try and take the stage if we can catch Alaphilippe before the final climb. I'm surprised he's used that tactic as well. I thought he'd wait for that final little hill. An absolutely stunning setting. 6k remain as Sergio Higgy now looking to attack before the coat de Solerio to give it its proper turn rather than that final little hill before the line and 4k to go we are starting to catch Julian Alaphilippe and Skelmosa is positioned so well to maybe attack this climb let's go up to 99 straight away with Marcus Hulagard and I think we can launch something here Alaphilippe has been caught and 
Oh my word, this climb is steep, but we're going to give it a go. Skelmosa on the attack at the Tour de France. Can we press on and take this stage over the top of the climb? We're going to go 99 all the way until the line. We have 2k to go. Patrick Conrad has something left and we only have a kilometre left in the stage. But I think with the descent, we do have enough to hold on and perhaps win the stage in Corsica. What a victory for Skelmosa in Ajaxio. And we win the stage. What a win. Skielmosa needs to make absolutely every opportunity count. And that is what he is doing. 9 seconds plus 10 bonus seconds makes 19 gains on both Pogaccia and Bernal today. Leaving us third place in the GC still. But cutting the gap to less than 90 seconds to the Maillot And well, the final stage of today's episode... The final stage, I think, in Corsica at this year's Tour de France, and it's a huge one. I can't count all the KOMs again, but it's a mountain top finish on the Rastonica, and it's going to be a huge day. So sadly, not quite the plus five. It's a plus two day, not too bad for Skelmosa, I guess, but we need to manage our effort well and try to do well on the final climb. I have just about managed to get three riders again into the breakaway. Captain Price isn't long for this group considering uh, the terrain, but he can try and pull for a little bit with Vidaberg and Hulagard, our main leaders and satellite riders up the roads. And sadly, we couldn't keep touch with the breakaway today. Ghana still on the front of the peloton and all of our riders, our satellite riders, have been caught with Madawas, Lopez and Gasper remaining at the front. I can't believe it. It's happened again. It's Pino, it's Bernal and it's Tade Pagaccia who have fallen and crashed. They've crashed again. What is going on? There are so many crazy crashes taking place. All their teammates are of course going to drop back and we somehow find ourselves controlling at the front of the race. But of course, this isn't how we want to win the Tour de France. We don't want to win due to our rivals' unfortunes. So we'll just tempo at 68 and probably let them get back in. I mean, don't we just show so much sportsmanship here at Uno X? They're back in the peloton. This isn't ideal though, is it? Hulagard is gone and we are now out of domestiques. There are 89 riders still in the group, guys. It's not a great performance by Skelmos' teammates today. And not really ideal, is it, when your GC leader has to go back himself to collect water. And now now to the front of the peloton, it's Pogaccia's teammate Patrick Conrad who has been sent there surely to try and blow this race up. So I've done my best guys to manage things before we reach the Rastonica. 53 riders still here, Skelmos is still alone of course. Let's see what we can do, but I can only see us losing to Bernal and Pogaccia today. So first attacks of the day, it's Gino Maida, but Simon Yates is the only rider to escape from the group at this stage, and Joao Maida has come to the front. And this is the section of the stage I decide to let go. A little earlier than I would have liked, we've let go of the Pelson. We're going to have to set a steady rhythm to the top of the climb, try to avoid the likes of Jon Izaguirre blocking us, and try to limit our losses, guys. And we're controlling things. Okay, 4k to go. No attacks in the GC group. We have 20 riders. And as I say that, it's Egan Bernal on the attack. And of course, Tade Pogaccia is going to follow. There they go into the distance. No one else can follow immediately. But maybe Primoz Roglic's legs are taking a turn for the better. We have 3k to go. It's just over a minute to the front of the race. And we're still crawling up at our own tempo. But look at Pog. And look at Bernal. We're just coming under the flamme rouge ourselves when Pogaccia and Bernal cross the line together. And no one is near them really in the mountains. Let's be frank. And Skelmosa is going to lose, I think, about two minutes upwards on them today. Maybe seeing the yellow jersey slip through our fingers again. The final gap back to Poggy and Bernal then was 2 minutes and 30 exactly. Oh, it's a painful day. A plus 2 day, but our teammates didn't really help us out at all. We did the best we could with Scalmosa, but those guys were different level. Bar day as well, a strong day for the Frenchman. Really now piling the pressure on for third place is Bar day. But um, we're 4 minutes and 1 second back as we enter the final rest day of the Tour de France. But now and Pog, they really do look a class above, but we need to try and throw in some tactics, some crazy, ambitious, optimistic tactics where hopefully 
we can find a way to gain that time back on them. We're going to give it a go, but a podium at the Tour de France, let's be real, it's not a bad result. I still want to try and go all in though for yellow. Pog first in green as well with Magnus Court doing very well third place in that jersey. Uh, Jonas Gere still in polka dots, Pog still in whites and UE team Emirates are dominating the Movistar classification. And so one final week awaits us. Let's take a look. We start with a 50 kilometre time trial. Definitely not looking forward to that stage. I, I feel we'll probably lose a lot more time to Pog. Maybe not for now. Uh, we'll see though finishing in Cannes. Stage 17 probably for the sprinters. Stage 18, stage 19 and stage 20 are the final stages in the mountains. And that is probably where the yellow jersey will be won and lost before, of course, we finish on Champs-Élysées. But guys, absolutely smash that like button down below if you're enjoying the final race of the Uno X career. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. Where will we finish in the final week? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.